All honor, glory, and praise be to Jesus, my most beloved, my bridegroom, our bridegroom. He coming. Whoop, brick road, brick bridge, I should say. <laughs> I love the Lord so much, you all. He's been taking me to the secret place. I didn't know what it was called back then, but it was back the first time um, that I got trained by the Holy Spirit in the wilderness was 2011, 2012. And um, yeah, he taught me. I didn't know that's what it was called, the secret place. But um, but now I it's a it's a different type of experience and relationship that I have with him now. Back then it was strictly teach, teaching me. Here's another brick. There we go. Got that out of the way. But um, anyway, I, so I kind of just put that all together the other day. I thought, oh my goodness, that's where. The secret place that's what that would have been considered except for this time it's a much more personal experience I'm telling you it is very intimate it can be like it's so beautiful I don't I wish I could just take people with me so that that way they would never turn away from Jesus because once you know what it's really all about it doesn't matter how much you know like the Torah or whether the earth is round or flat or whether you know the aliens are coming you know and all of that it's about knowing his voice learning it through um, solitude and uh, you know detaching from fleshly pleasures the world the things of it and that's what he taught me the first time in the secret place and I was much more immature, all emotionally. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not immature emotionally anymore. He's working on that in the secret place with me. Um, and I seek not the counsel of men. I I take everything to the Lord. I pray to, and I I've been very. I've actually been pretty disciplined about that. He has taught me all things but anyway yeah um it is such a glorious night tonight the big full moon was beautiful and um i had a really awesome doordash run a little bit ago and i didn't know sometimes he does this with me where like i'll just on a whim just take a ride you know the drive or take an order you know and it was it was like 12 1225 for 13 miles and so that's really not you know well I say 12 miles it was six miles there to the place and then six miles back um but anyway it ended up being a 14 I think 25 run instead of the 12 that I accepted and then I got to have this beautiful conversation with him on the way and then um then I got to see the moon and it was so beautiful He's so romantic, really. And, you know, guys might have a hard time, you know, swallowing all of that. Well, you just take it to him. Just take it to him. Take everything to him. And he will walk you through it, you know. And it's about the contrite heart and humble heart. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, all of the pain of this um, awakening that has taken place. That coming to realize that virtually every single person, including your own child, is narcissistic, that is a pretty rude awakening. I didn't know that there were actual human beings. Are they human? No, it's it's principalities behind it all. You, we, you know, those of us who know him and know the word including the scripture, <laughs> um, know that it's principalities. And this has been the, the most wonderful spiritual exercise. Um, I've really, he has really toughened up my spiritual muscles. And because I had no clue that people, there were such people who had no capacity for genuine love, genuine compassion, genuine generosity genuine, you know, just genuine person. I didn't know that they didn't have the capacity. I always knew that something was wrong. Well, not always, but 
boy, that should it get revealed. <laughs> oh, and uh, yeah, so the situation that I find myself in is surrounded by narcissists in life. And I have been, um, well, the world might call me a victim, but I know that I'm not. And I know that I've been in his hands the whole time. I've actually been under his wing. And this was all for good. All for good. It's like I was saying, someone in my situation, I had to start my life over at age 55. I say start over because I got sober at that time. Again, it was off and on through through my life. Um, a lot of trauma starting at age eight. And um, yeah, he's processed all that with me. I mean, it's still, it's still, I'm a work in progress, aren't we all? Aren't we all? And so, you know, I, far be it from me, I wouldn't ever try to judge and um, assume that I know um, other uh, another until, you know, I could sit with them and talk. But, you know, I've been prejudged <laughs> so many times with good reason. I could see why. Yeah, I really can. Because, but if you see through fleshly eyes, too, you would look at me and you know, whatever, you know, I just never could get it together. I never could acclimate to worldly systems. Um, I never did enjoy pop culture like other people did and movies. And I love books, but he made me give him, you know, I had hundreds of books <laughs> that would, yeah. And so he had me get rid of those. He told me, um, at one point, uh, pointed out that the Puritans were the way to, um, to go. If it was going to be anything that I would read, it would be the pilgrims. And then I found out later through um, some family genealogy paperwork that I didn't realize I had, but that I had ancestors that came over like after the Mayflower, but on like, a, you know, the second fleet of ships that came something like the Arabella was the name of it. But yeah, so that's been interesting to learn about the blood. I wonder how that all works. I mean, I, I know I listen to some other people now who, who, um, refer heavily to the Puritan writings and it's beautiful. It's beautiful stuff. And those are the people who knew how to go to the secret place. Well, Andrew Murray, um, was from the late 1800s and he, uh, his book, Humility was one that, uh, the father showed to me uh, many years ago, that would have been around the time, uh, I went into the secret place for the first time. I'll be darned. Wow. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Andrew Murray's book, Humility, changed my life. So that would have been, well, at least I think of it that way because it was something I could totally relate to. He was speaking, you know, some of my language I felt. And then as time went on, you know, I realized, you know, some things about his writings that I didn't completely agree with later on, but it sure did, it had me delve deeper into my relationship with Jesus. And, um, so yeah, I don't know where I was going with all this conversation, but I just want to glorify the most high and yeah. And know that I, um, I pray that any amount, any in scintilla of pride that I might have, uh, be smashed and that, um, I, that the father would use me you know, he has as an intercessor. And, uh, so yeah, I, it's a life of grief <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. And it's, uh, and it's okay because I know what it has produced in me as far as desperation for, for him. So, okay, that's it for now.